In this video, I'm going to show you some of the fundamental design tooling in Autodesk Forma. This will not include the conceptual design tools in 3D sketch mode, which is covered in a different video. We will be using a combination of the tools available in the right-hand menu to reproduce the design option we are looking at here. We've got buildings, vegetation, limits, roads, and generic shapes. Finally, we have the 3D sketch menu, which, as mentioned, will be covered in a different tutorial. Since the site is relatively large, I will start by splitting it into smaller plots. In this example, I'm using the transform tooling to subtract an area occupied by a 10 meter wide shape that represents a road from the site limit. I'm using the surface tool under generic shapes to represent the road, defining its width and clicking enter to close the shape. To subtract the surface from the site limit, I find it useful to first move the shape to my base layers. Next, select the site limit followed by the shape you want to subtract from the site limit. Then navigate to the transform tool in the right hand panel and select subtract. There we go. I will now repeat this procedure for all the roads or splits I want to make in this particular site. Now that I've divided the plot into various subplots, I'm ready to start drawing some different design options. There may be geometric height constraints that apply to your site. You can add height constraints via the limit section in the right hand panel. In this example, I'm going to trace the footprint of the plot I just drew and then specify the maximum height which my design can't exceed. This can be in meters above ground or meters above sea level, which you can adjust on the right hand side. In this project, I will create two 25 meter height constraints to ensure that the height of my design complements the surrounding buildings quite well. Next, we can use the generic building tooling to trace the footprint of the constraint and then simply drag and snap to the top of the height boundary. All right, next I want to define a little green space in the center of this proposal. So I'm going to choose the surface tool and then trace the plot and on the right hand side I will make it the color green. Perhaps there is a tree line that surrounds this plot so I'm going to click add trees, trace the shape, set the height and define the spacing between them. There we go, now we have a nice green courtyard in the center. Let's proceed to specify the function assigned to each of these buildings. A function defines the building's programming and can be changed in the right hand panel. First select them and then via the function menu select whether it should be residential, commercial, unspecified or indeed whether you want to add a new function. In this example, I want to ensure that the first floor of all the residential buildings are actually commercial spaces. In the right hand panel, I will increase the floor height to five meters and then select commercial. When we later review area metrics associated with this proposal, you will be able to receive a breakdown of area metrics per function. Next, I'm going to draw a hotel. Since hotel is one of the default functions, I'm going to add a new function, specify hotel, and then give it the color orange. I can also choose whether that function will be included in the area metrics or not. Next, we will take a look at line buildings. Line buildings are automations that are controlled by a line. In the right hand panel, you can define the width and alignment of the line buildings. You can choose whether to align the building center line, to the left of the line, or to the right of the line. To align with the site limit boundary, I choose to align to the left of the line. When I hover over the site limit, the boundary which it will align to is highlighted in red. 
start drawing the building and notice that the edge of the building is aligned to the site limit. To create an angle, simply hold and shift and continue pulling the line. In the right hand menu, you can add or remove floors, set the floor height, as well as choose whether to include sections or not. You can also specify the function. Finally, we can add circulation or define floor plans. In the floor plan menu, you will see the different section dimensions in the line building. You can add floor plans for each section type. Click the plus button to start drawing a new floor plan in the floor plan sketcher. Use the available tooling to define your units and your areas of circulation. Under the ruler menu, you also have the option to view dimensions or areas. You also have the option to adjust the background grid and further snapping options. When you're done designing, simply return to design mode and view the floor plan in your building. You can produce multiple floor plans per section. I will now demonstrate how to add parking inside a building. Parking is found in the right hand panel. When you activate parking, you will get an estimate of the number of parking spots in your proposal. To view the graphic, remove the functions view by pressing area metrics. You will now see a graphical representation of a parking layout appear on every floor of the building. Edit the parking parameters such as the lane width and dimensions of each parking spot. This will give you an updated estimate. You will also notice that there is a separate area metric for the parking spots in your key statistics overview. In the next video, we will consider the different types of information you can get about your design option, including the area metrics and key qualities, and will conduct a comparison. Thank you for watching.